The Motueka River is an iconic New Zealand waterway and for the past 10 years it's been the focus of an intensive study by scientists. The goal of the Integrated Catchment Management or ICM program has been to gain better information to more effectively manage the land, water and coastal environments in catchments where there are many and potentially conflicting land uses and to do so in a way that we understand both the complex way a catchment works and the way people work within it. Conflicts and perceptions of such things as water allocation or worsening water quality mean we need to find new ways to manage our water, land and coasts in an integrated way and to do this collaboratively. Andrew Fenimore coordinated the ICM project and here he discusses the overall theme of what the research team were trying to achieve. He also talks about the ecological processes involved in biophysical integration and the importance of scientists taking an integrated and interdisciplinary approach to research. Well, land is connected to water. I think that's the fundamental aspect of integrated catchment management. So mountains to the sea is a real concept in terms of geography. And if you consider that a particle of sediment that's coming from a ridge top flows all this way down the river and probably ends up in the gut of a scallop in Tasman Bay in this river, then that demonstrates the interconnections that we're talking about. Uh, well, it's all about integration really, it's connections in every sense of the word and I like to think of it in terms of uh, four short uh, quips and, and they are that everything is connected to everything else, um, everything must go somewhere, nature knows best and there's no such thing as a free lunch. But most important of all is those interconnections right across the landscape and with people. These ideas mark new thinking, but they also reflect on wider concerns of New Zealanders, issues such as sustainability and biodiversity loss. Well I think we're focusing on integrated catchment management because we're in a new era and it's a, the era of sustainability, sustainable development, sustainable management and that has not that, that is a recent construct really. If you look right back to the early settler days in this catchment, the early settler ethos was to clear the land and make a living and survive. And then we moved into the production era, we uh, were trying to maximise production from agriculture, that required a lot of clearing of rem remaining uh, trees and wetlands and, and riparian vegetation. Now we're into the sustainability era and we're thinking, did we go too far in those previous uh, times? But new theories on sustainability require new tools, such as the ICM program. We're very good, we have been very good at researching what's happening in the water, what's happening out here on the land, and what's happening down in the bay. But the research that's needed now that underpins this whole ICM approach is the research of the interconnections, the integration. Les Basher is a geomorphologist and has worked on sediment issues throughout New Zealand. He also led the sediment research as part of the ICM program. Well, long-term data sieve is absolutely critical for sediment research because, as I said, uh, a lot of the sediment comes in big events which don't occur very often. So you need to be able to put what you measure over any short period of time into a longer-term context. And this site here illustrates it beautifully. We, you've got a, a water level record that goes back to 1969. Uh, and we understand the relationship between flow in the river and the amount of sediment in the river. So even though we've only measured sediment uh, in the sites within the river for about seven years, we can use the long-term data here to predict what the sediment yield is since 1969. We've done that down at the coast, and what we can show at the coast is that in the uh, seven or eight years that we've been measuring sediment here, the yields has been really low compared to what it's been in the past, and we've been able to show how much it varies from year to year. Uh, at the coast, the sediment yield varies from about 70,000 tonnes at its lowest to 1.7 million tonnes at its highest. So it's a huge variation on an annual basis. There were several key stakeholders wanting to learn more about sedimentation in the catchment. They included the forestry industry as well as the aquaculture industry who were concerned about the effects on shellfish out to sea in Tasman Bay. And Fishing Game New Zealand were worried about the impact on trout in what is considered one of the country's iconic fishing rivers. There's been a lot, of, lot written about the decline in the trout fishery. A lot of people pointed the finger at sediment as a cause of that and, and forestry land use as a cause of the sediment coming into the river. Of course, all that debate was happening in a data-free environment. There was no information on sediment uh, either at this point in the river or at any other point in the river. So the first thing we had to do was work out uh, how, how would you measure 
uh, the amount of sediment in the river uh, as it affects the trout fishery. Uh, and in order to do that, we spent a lot of time with our biological colleagues uh, talking with them about what were the key parameters that we could use to define uh, how sediment affected the trout fishery. And Les says the research involving a large number of stakeholders has proven highly successful. Well, I guess what we've learned is that partnership takes quite a long time to develop. We've had to build trust and respect, and we've had to share information, and we've had to make sure that we're doing things that are relevant. So we've had to fully understand you know, what are the key issues that we need to be working with, what are the constraints our partners have been working with. Um, so it's taken a long time, but I think we've built a really strong partnership in this programme uh, between the science agencies, the resource management agencies and community. This is the way of the future. Um, we, we want to move away from this polarised um, debate that we have about land and water use. We want to understand each other's views and we want to work out ways to resolve them. I think, and I think what we've developed here in the ICM programme is a pointer to how we might be able to do that. Rob Davies Coley is a specialist in water quality and his role in the ICM programme was to investigate pollution from land use in the Motueka catchment. River water quality then provides you with an estimate of how much stuff is coming off the landscape and in particular it can be a very useful integrating indicator of the, of the land use whether it's sustainable or not. And Rob agrees that environmental issues such as water quality need to be addressed taking an interdisciplinary and integrated approach. I think we've got a long way to go in New Zealand and, and environmental problems really have to be addressed as an interdisciplinary approach. Um, it's, it's interdisciplinary is something very different from multidisciplinary to me. Multidisciplinary means just a, you know, you have a biologist and an engineer and they both do their own thing. The biologist does biology and doesn't really talk to the engineer if they don't have to. Interdisciplinary means the, the biologist and the engineer actually develop an understanding of each other's um, culture and discipline and then they can work together and, the, and the, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts, so to speak. Um, I think we were starting to get along that road to truly interdisciplinary and therefore integrated research in the, in the MOT ICM. His research found there were big fluctuations in pollution flowing down the river and those pollutants had wider impacts than previously thought. The, the Motueka River is actually a pretty clean river most of the time and if you go out and sample at base flow conditions you will usually get clean water in the Motueka River. But we know that during storm flows, and we did some special storm flow sampling, the river is much less clean and in fact um, fecal indicator bacteria uh, increase by about a hundredfold at the peak of storms. And the, the question then is where is that fecal pollution coming from? And we had some inkling from early work done in the, in the Motueka ICM program that there were hot spots of pollution in parts of the catchment. So if I just indicate on the, the map of the catchment behind me here, this is the main stem Motueka River going out to sea and its plume goes into Tasman Bay and we have a monitoring site there with the pink arrow, um, that's at Woodman's Bend. So at that site there we were seeing clean water most of the time but much more polluted water at times during storm events. And what we think is happening during those storm events is that pollution has been flushed from hot spots of uh, fecal pollution in the catchment. And one particular hot spot is the Sherry catchment here. It's this little little catchment here, rising in forest and going through uh, what's partly dairy pasture. And we know that there's a lot of fecal pollution at that point, that we have a monitoring site there again with a marked with a pink arrow. And at that site, we know that there is a lot of fecal pollution all of the time. During large storm events, that pollution can make its way right down into the Wangapeka River, which of course is very clean, having come from Kaharangi National Park. And it makes its way down, all the way down to the Motueka, the Motueka River, and then is squirted out into Tasman Bay, where it's a hazard potentially for shellfish and bathing beaches. So that was a major finding. A mountains to sea perspective implies catchments have an impact beyond the river mouth. And that was an innovative design element of the ICM research. 
The Cawthron Institute looked at the coastal environment as part of the Motueka catchment. Well, for me, the most important thing um, about integration is, is really linking the, the three ecosystems, the, the terrestrial, the freshwater, and the coastal ecosystems together. One of the aspects of, of our ICM work has been the fact that we've um, looked at the area affected by the river plume as being, in fact, part of the catchment. So we've, at, we've tacked on a 180 square kilometers to the, the Motueka catchment as the depositional area of the river plume. And this is the part that's really important. This is the part of the catchment that's really important to the coastal stakeholders. I mean, if we, if we look at a, you know, around on our, our surrounding landscape, it, it becomes quite obvious to us um, how we're impacting the environment. Um, we have all sorts of different land uses occurring in our catchment, and we can see those things happening. Um, for the marine environment, it's much more challenging to see how those sorts of activities impact not only the, the, what we term the river plume ecosystem, uh, but the resources out there as well, whether it be aquaculture or the scallop fishery, for instance. Um, and what ICM has allowed us to do is come up with some novel ways of measuring um, changes in that ecosystem out there whether it be changes in the amount of sedimentation or nutrient loading or even the loading, loading of fecal contaminants. And both Cawthron scientists agree that integration, as well as adopting a truly interdisciplinary approach, has proven highly successful. Historically, uh, catchment management has gone down to maybe including the estuary, but not what's beyond the estuary, and not what's affecting the, the coastal environment. Um, and by doing this, by looking further beyond into the coastal environment, we're enabling the coastal stakeholders to be, be involved in, in catchment management because previously they have really had to accept what's coming down the pipe and uh, manage their resources around it. I think one of the most, um, one of the other valuable things about something such as the ICM program, something that lasts a number of years, is that it enables us to to collect long-term data, and that's critical when we think about things that are happening on much longer time scales, such as climate change. And if we don't begin collecting those data sets, well, then we're going to have a difficult time really understanding how the system's changing. And so one of the, the, the really neat things that came out of this program was the um, ability to start developing a long-term monitoring buoy out in Tasman Bay. And that is evolving through time, and we're hopeful that um, we're going to be, begin developing what we're calling our second generation buoy that will enable us to, to collect real-time information on the physical characteristics of the bay over time. My best example of, of, of a true ridge tops to sea outcome from this research has been our ability to actually track bacteria well up in the catchment, 50 kilometers up in the catchment, all the way out um, to where we're farming uh, green shell mussels, and that's six to ten kilometers offshore. I think that the uh, the infrastructure that's been put together through this program has been really important in enabling us to, whatever question we have, I and mean, I can talk to someone who's working up in the catchment and say, well, what are the nutrient generation rates? Um, suspended sediments. I can talk to Les Basher and he can tell me specifically about those nutrients and where they're coming from. These flows of sediment and nutrients, bacteria, whatever, are in fact connected. And I think one of the benefits of having an integrated approach to this sort of research is that you don't just focus on one problem, which might be the, the swimming water quality in a particular river, but you're focusing on the whole bundle of approaches and, uh, and issues there of, of the sediment, the nutrients, uh, the, the amount of water flowing through. They are all connected. And I think our individual research disciplines have had to work together to find out how those connections work in practice.